Real Life Street Stars, man. And we got a special edition right now. Special edition. You know, we're doing something different. Loud from ATL. <laughs> Tiffany Simmons. <laughs> the Plugs Lawyer. <laughs> the Plugs Lawyer. Yes. Yeah. How you doing, Miss Lady? How you doing today? I am doing well. Thanks for having me. You know, real life, real nigga shit. It's real Tiffany. Shit all the time. Don't before forget the off. M. Don't forget before, the M Simmons. <laughs> before we start this off, we have a beautiful black queen in the building. We do want to recognize that. Um, we love and respect black women. We just want to put that out there. Don't kill us. <laughs> um, the plugs lawyer. Yes. Let's get into it. Um, cause that's Let's a, do it. That's a profound name, the plugs lawyer. You say so, that's a what? That's a profound name, the plugs lawyer. Well, I'm a profound woman. Okay, let's talk about <laughs> that then. Let, let's get the start though. Are you are you originally from Atlanta? No. Um. Well, I was born in Michigan. Uh, shouts out to Grand Rapids, Michigan, home of the plugs lawyer, hometown of Floyd Mayweather, another winner, home of the DeBarge family. I mean, we 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 produce winners. Home of Willie the Kid, you know. We produce winners. So that's where I was born. I left home 17, went to Florida for FAMU. And um, so shouts out to FAMU. I'm a proud HBCU grad. And um, that's just that on that. Now, Atlanta, my Atlanta ties came in. My mom's oldest sister lived here. So I would come here as a kid when I was younger. I loved Atlanta. I loved the vibe. It was, it was uh, very different than what you see now. But um, Atlanta stole my heart. So I moved back here uh, once I graduated undergrad and, and the rest is history. I went to law school here at John Marshall Law School. And um, hold on. Hold on. I told y'all we got action behind me. Hey, we got okay. this, uh, this real, hey, We make this shit real work. We keep it all this. You don't care. You don't care. We keep it all this. It's real. <laughs> Right, right. Niggas don't give a fuck. They don't yeah, care. Nah, nah anyway, not. it's all good, though. We got a beautiful view. I see the sun, sunrise, I mean, sunset behind me. A nice pool, you know. So, my setup is good. I see y'all chilling. Y'all in the studio. We in the stew. We in okay. the stew. We got to give you a tour. But I got to talk about the HBCU because you did go to one, but you do have a video talking about why you shouldn't go to one or, or why you should uh, be careful before you go to one. Well, um. Let's get into that. Um, Let's get into it. You want to just get right to business. I mean, dang, right can, we, can we get a little foreplay first? I mean, you, okay, you want to. Okay, okay, let me. Let, let's, let's, he let, took let, the draws off. No, no. Let's get into it. No, I love, so, I love my HBCU. I love um, being able to be educated. However, I love children and I love the safety of our kids even more. And if you are creating a predatory environment and allowing kids to be preyed upon, I'm not going to allow that. So it's not a, a, um, a, a jab against uh, going to college, getting education, but I damn for sure ain't going to stand for people doing stuff to kids because kids have rights too. So that is what is going on with my uh, retirement case because we 300 million that's what we, that's what's going on, and um, that's just that on that. You know, that's the short version of it because it's, it's a real heavy topic. Because at the end of the day, a lot of people that went to that college or their grandparents went to that college, their granddads. Let's be specific. If if any male that they know went to that school, they're gonna have to look at themselves and what's going on in their family. But let's get real. I am a product. I am the product of sex abuse now i was the person as you see god saved me getting love out the mud saved me uh determination faith saved me but it's a lot of people that not like me so part of me handling this case is because there are so many people that have been in my shoes that's still in my shoes because so many people want to sweep it under the rug and all I said in the video that you saw was we not sweeping that shit under the rug no more. We not letting uncle come to the family house and we know uncle got a problem because that's what happened to me. And if it wasn't for 
you know, God having a bigger plan for my life to make me the undefeated attorney, owner of Simmons Law, standing 10 toes down on integrity. You know what I'm saying? So honestly, this was just uh, a full circle moment because I had to address stuff even in my own family. Now, in my case, what happened to me happened when I was five. I told my family right then, and they did what most people and families do in those situations. They sweep it under the rug. My story never changed. My story never changed. But the predator, everybody else's story in my family was changing, and the predator continued to do what he was doing. So if I don't stand for my clients, the three people, the one person who cried out after a year of trying to get help from this school and they swept it under the rug, that school want to talk about our clients not, uh, not being involved with the investigation. Before I was retained, my team was retained by three different students, three different families, three different sets of parents that care about their kid versus a school's image. Man, I could keep going on and on, but we ain't. Look, tell them quit fucking with a real nigga and run me that 300 million so I can stop talking about that shit. Because I got a good life. I went through therapy so I can heal. I don't use my situation as a crutch or something to get attention because I'm good over here. Attorney Simmons, the plugs lawyer, I have other great things going on in my life and in my community. However, I'm not going to stand for that. That's, that's crazy. One of my clients, he, he, he came from Chicago. His, his mom and dad didn't have a, a whole bunch of money to be doing a whole bunch of stuff. So he's on financial aid. He's doing things to, to uh, better himself because he wanted to become an attorney. But when you have admin grooming you for certain things, when you have admin praying on you because they know your financial situation, they know you come from another place and not Atlanta. This is bigger than you. Do you all remember when um, Penn State, yes. Sandusky, Ohio? OK, OK, OK. Well, the shit ain't stopped with them. So it's time, it's time for Morehouse College to be held accountable. When I got a call from somebody from 1974 telling me the exact same situations as what's happening in 2020. And, and for those who don't know, can you re-clarify? Because I don't think we ever actually stated what the situation was. Oh, okay. Well, this, the, the school, I have filed a 31-page suit on behalf of my three clients, Michael Key, John Doe number one, and John Doe number two. My law firm, Simmons Law, is the lead law firm on the case. However, we do have a, a great team on the case. Um, a lot of what you see, you just see me at, in the forefront because that's just what it is. That's just what it is. But um, the lawsuit is pending. But what has taken place over the last year, they have said behind closed doors that they would do a settlement. And what they did is they bullshit it because all they saw was me, Tiffany Simmons, um, attorney Simmons. Oh, that black girl, we going to run her off. We going to shut her up. But they didn't know that I got God with me. They didn't know that I'm not going to shut up till they run me that money. They didn't know that I was prepared for this. They didn't know that nobody has bought me. I ain't in nobody's pockets. That's why they can't shut me up. I'm, sta yeah. I'm standing on the truth. So what has taken place is when my clients, each individual, face different situations with admin, people who work at this institution who either sexually assaulted them or harassed them or intimidated them or try to do things to ruin their life. When they try to address this within the school, the school did nothing. All you got to do is Google lawsuits against the, that whole area. A lot of them schools that check the shit out. Check the shit out. You ain't got to just look at what I'm saying. I'm speaking truth to power. So we all know, we all know the story of uh, David and Goliath. Oh, yeah. I, didn't hit, I didn't hit Goliath with that stone. That's, that's why they scrambling now. 
That's why the next time you see me, I'm probably going to be iced out with my plugs lawyer chain because that 300 million is going to hit. And we pray for that. Yes. And we pray. But let me. Let it's me, already you know what, done. Thank you. One thing, already, hey, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. One thing I love about you is that you can go from very professional TV personality <laughs> to just down down no, south no, uh, no, who uh, no, three personalities, three personalities <laughs> but it's how do you i honestly wonder how, how do you get away with that because like in the corporate world you know it's like they monitor everything they always taking people's social medias and you don't give a damn you you doing what well, the thing acting, is because i stand on truth i stand in integrity and i know who i am and I'm the owner. When you the boss, you pay the cost to be the boss. Now, I'm not going to say that being authentically myself didn't come with a high cost. Because it does. It does. But it what does. Are the things that, what are some of the pitfalls or some of the struggles you've had keeping it real and being yourself? I mean, it, I really don't want say it, say to say it as things are, are pitfalls because... I pity the people that, that are afraid to be they self. I pity the people that are afraid to live their purpose. I pity the people that's afraid to um, use their voice in a positive way. So I really don't look at what I, what I do as, oh, I'm just trying to keep it real. I'm being myself. I'm Tiffany. I'm Tiffany. I'm Tiffany the smart girl. I'm Tiffany the good girl with trap habits. I'm Tiffany the plugs lawyer. I'm Tiffany. I mean... I have been able to learn from a lot of situations. For example, I've had family members that my granddad was a minister, but then I got family members that did street shit. I've been around millionaires to me being a, a page for the House of Representatives in Washington, D.C. at 16. So I've been blessed to be in a lot of different situations, even good and bad. So that's just enable me to be able to just move how I move and move in different ways. I mean, it's really God's plan. Trust me. This ain't, this ain't no gimmick. If it ain't, if it ain't no gimmick, you know, it, it's going, it's going to resonate with people. Real is going to resonate. <laughs> so when you get this money, what is, what is the next spectrum that you, because like you said, you're the, the retired. Yes. You know, so what will, what will be the next phase of your life, the next chapter? The next chapter of my life, I'm actually doing it now. I'm focused on my show, uh, Hood Court, which is my reality judge show. Yes, Judge Judy retired. So why not take her place as the highest rated, highest paid TV judge? So I'm still going to get to the money. Um, I plan to just kind of focus more on my family, uh, create my own family. Um, I don't have children yet. That's something that I do aspire to have. But it, it's all God's plan. I mean, that, it'll happen when it's supposed to. How many children would you like to have? Um, I always say I would have twins because I would like to just have two. Um, I wasn't raised where I was close to my siblings. And that affected me, you know, in, in my life in right. different ways, good and bad. But I wanted to always teach, you know, my children to shit be what the fuck is y'all talking about? What? No, nah, quit that motherfucking whispering and shit. <laughs> Cause you know I can read your energy, so I'm looking at y'all trying to answer your shit. <laughs> ask me. We like to ask all the beautiful women that come on to our show. Is, does a regular nigga have a chance? Now you said does a who? Does a regular nigga have a chance? No, because I'm not a regular, I'm not a regular bitch. So why the fuck would I be being around somebody regular? No, 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 <laughs> no. You didn't even give me a chance to give it. Give right, it because I'm not regular. I'm not regular. Okay. So. so what is your, perf okay, let me ask you this, right? Because <laughs> I can see people being afraid to holler at you, right? I can see people being afraid. So what type of men hit on you? What type of man do I like? Yeah. Um, a gangster and a gentleman. I like someone that's intelligent like myself. I like someone that I can learn from like myself. I like someone that's um, spontaneous like myself. I like someone that's a boss like myself. 
I like someone that loves himself like I love myself. Um, I'm you look. I'm being specific. I'm t- I'm answering. Um, you say it's not. Let me ask you this: Does a plug have the chance? Since yes. you are the plug, I'm lawyer. the motherfucking plug's lawyer. So yes, the plug has a chance. Okay. What do you mean? I mean, listen. So basically, if I was ghost, right? <laughs> Yes, ghosts would have no. Let okay. Let's 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 use that example. Ghosts would probably have a chance, but see, ghosts fucked up when he started fucking with Angela. So nah. Facts. I don't know. I might I might be more of a Tommy girl because I'm just as crazy as Tommy. So I don't know. Nah, Lala was too pussy. Nah. She was so pussy. How you mean? No. I'm not. I'm not any character on there. If I was, if I was a character on Power, I would be the motherfucking plugs lawyer. I wouldn't be none of them. No. <laughs> so, what made you want to get into reality? You know, are you. I know in Atlanta that's very, a bre- very prevalent. A lot of people are involved in that type. But what made you want to come from practicing law to actually being on? Well, the thing is, I've always done that. So it was never a switch of anything. My areas of practice um, were mainly business, criminal defense, and entertainment law. And that's because those were the areas that affected my life. Um, I've I've always done stuff in entertainment since I was young, be it production, behind the scenes, be it in front of the scenes as talent. Um, So it it just is natural for me. I'm on other shows, be it new shows down to being in movies being in music videos so it's just it's the stuff i'm passionate about to be honest with you um as far as the reality judge show that idea stemmed from a lot of things um i didn't come from attorneys growing up as you probably can imagine um but i i paved the way for all of the new ones you see now that's trying to you know copy my swag <laughs> But what I will say is, um, not coming from lawyers, what I used to see growing up was the TV judges, you know, the Judge Mathis, Judge Judy. So that's what I wanted to be. So for me, again, it was just natural evolution of, of, you know, me accomplishing my dreams. So who is your favorite TV judge? My favorite TV judge has to be Judge Mathis because we both from Michigan and, you know, he just, we just got that, that, that lingo that just comes from, you know, I just fucks with Judge in a minute. But what I will say is Judge Judy is like, um, I would say my, my judge fairy godmother because I'm about to take her spot and get that bag. She was getting like, she was getting 42 million a year to do her show. So I want 43 million. Yeah. So I want 43. I want to share my favorite Judge Judy show. It was a young lady and two uh, niggas, right? And she was like, she told the judge, they stole my purse. I had XYZ in my purse. I had a cell phone. I had my keys. I had my wallet. And the dude on the other end said, it wasn't no phone in that purse. She said, <laughs> judgment to the plaintiff for the whole. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> that was your favorite episode? Well, I can't wait until you see Hood Court because we need you to be quoting my shit. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. What, what is your favorite episode of Hood Court? My favorite episode of Hood Court? Um, actually, you know what? i kind of been doing Hood Court a little bit different lately because I've been having some tech issues because they know a real nigga been speaking, so they've been trying to right. shadow ban me, right? Yeah. right? Yeah, so... Yeah, yeah. I've been doing this morning show called Bait Justice on Zoom. And that shit been dope because we've been talking about a lot of different topics, especially stuff related to my spiritual gifts. So as it relates to my favorite hood court episode, I would say yesterday morning, I did a hood court kind of impromptu and I did a reading with a singer and it was just kind of dope. So I think as hood court you know evolves from what it started because i started it during quarantine because the courts were closed people still have problems you in the house with somebody you might be arguing let's talk it out on my show because i'm a certified mediator as well as an undefeated attorney so honestly what i gave people when i first started doing hood court you getting a top-notch attorney for free really 
on on a reality show. So from there, as I started just expressing more of my spiritual gifts with the rest of the world, it turned into me giving readings to people, etc. So it's it's just popping off to some dope shit, and I'm just excited. I just gotta keep one foot forward. I, I gotta ask you a question. Um, we definitely linked through the Jaguar Wright interview, right? And um, yes. what she had a lot to say about the mis how women are mistreated in the music industry, right? So just wondering from your perspective in your field, are black women done the exact same way? Is it? Is it? I know. I'm, I'm sure it's way harder for you, you know, for for black women to to have to do what they have to do to get to the top, but. Tell us some of the, the the situations that you went through just being, you know, the lawyer, you know, just going through your field. Like, um, well, it is, it is the same way. Um, and imagine me being the entertainment lawyer and I'm talent and I'm a pretty bitch. So I, all the stuff she was saying, I'm feeling that through both professions, because being an attorney, you know, people look at me and say, oh, you so authentic or you're being yourself. Well, why would I want to be somebody else? I could never be an old white man in a suit. I'll never be that. So why would I try to be that? And I often use that analogy because when I first started practicing for a couple years, you know, I'm trying to find my way and find my fit. But what when I found my fit, it was me being myself. But being the lawyer, um, you know, it is a good old boys club, even with the black males. Um, there are plenty high profile males that I have provided my skill to provided my team to provided stuff to help their high profile cases. And I get so much as a thank you. We can, we can run it back to how the justice system has failed me as a black woman. 2018, I had ended up, um, living, I moved in with a roommate. It was strictly business. I wanted to save up to buy a house. Because this is another thing. As a black undefeated attorney, I still work twice as hard but get paid less than men. Right. So that is something that I don't like. I don't prefer. That's why I celebrate um, the fact that this is my fifth book out. Come on now. <laughs> so I'm selling my books. I sell my artwork. I do other things to have other streams of revenue. But what undefeated attorney that's compared to Johnny Cochran because I have been compared to Johnny Cochran of this era and this, that, and the third and all these great ass people. Well, where the fuck is my check at to match that shit? Where the fuck is my check? Because I've owned Simmons Law for 11 years. I've never had a loan. I wasn't fucking no nigga that was paying the bills so I could, you know, do this as a hobby. You know, let me give you some more real nigga shit. This morning, my great aunt passed away and I told you about this, Jeff, when we when I called you. Rest in peace to my Aunt Mary Tyler. The Taylor family, I love you guys. My cousin Uriel, I love you and I'm sending love to you. But I bring that situation up for a reason. It's it's heartbroken as I felt for my family, for my cousin, even for myself, because that was one of my aunts that I still connected with on that side of the family that I really just loved her spirit. She was a great woman. She is a great woman. And I was like, okay, I don't think I want to do the interview. Like I really need to just get my shit together, you know, maybe take a bath, smoke a blunt and just chill because I'm like really feeling a sort of way. Right. And what did I say when I called you? What did I say? got to do something to uplift like keep it going you know it's like but and let me let me so let me elaborate number one yes i have to keep going because i'm a leader i'm a leader for not only myself my family but a lot of people besides that motherfucking weak ass school watching me it's a lot of people watching me that are inspired by what i do but number two i don't have no plan b this is it this is it. So if I don't show up, if I don't show up to court, if I don't show up as owner of Simmons Law, if I don't show up with Hood Court, if I don't show up with Bait Justice, if I don't show up in my community with the, the philanthropy that I do, then I don't have anything else. I don't have anything to fall back on. 
I don't have the 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 boot saying, "Oh, sit back. I got you a purse. Sit down and shut up." I, it's none of that. I'm living my purpose twenty four seven. So as it relates to you know me talking about my or mentioning my honest stuff, I knew I had to be here and use my voice and continue going because I got a purpose outside of clearly just being the pretty girl. <laughs> So I'm here showing up and showing out on these hoes. <laughs> how many niggas did? How many? How many plugs did try to get with you, man? You say what? How many plugs did try to hit hit on you and try to get? I with mean, you? it's not it. Uh, men and women hit on. I mean, it's a, it's it's this. Men and women hit on me. I am a vibe. I'm a whole ass vibe. I'm attractive. My spirit is attractive. So I get it. I get it. So for me, I. I I can't speaking really of, say. Uh, I can't really of, say. Being a, speaking of being a vibe and attraction, <laughs> Cardi B and Meg Thee Stallion recently dropped WAP. Okay. And we've been getting, they've been getting backlash because of the song. Now, yeah. I don't feel like the song is any different from any other song that's ever came out in the world. Why do you think that makes it? Their, their song is so supposed to be so risque or so out of the norm um i i don't know i mean this is this i'm gonna tell you like this it's people that talk and it's people that do i'm a person that do cardi is a person that do meg the stallion is a person that do and people gonna keep talking about us She's a person that do, so she letting you yeah. know. Yeah, you're so a I don't, I don't look. I, I don't have no answer for that because I don't talk about bum bitch shit. Like it's a music video, it's a song, it's one song. How many men talk about how many you know women they bending over and how big they stuff is and this and that. So it's a song. I'm not saying that I'm sitting here playing it 24 seven. I'm not saying I would raise my kids on the WAP song. It's entertainment. It's entertainment, you know? So that's my answer on that. Shouts out to Cardi. Shouts out to Meg. Shouts out to, you know, entertainment. I love music. So that's just that now, on that. <laughs> now, I, I asked you that so I can ask you this. Let's say a young gentleman comes to you and he said, uh, Miss Simmons, this, this young lady put the WAP on me, took me for all my bread, and... And I, how do I get that back? I, I feel it. I feel like I've been swindled. I feel like I've been like she got over him. I was finessed by the whap. I, is there by the whap? Is there any way that you could help him get his paper back? Well, if he came to hood court, I would tell him, "No, sir. That's what the fuck you get. <laughs> that's what you get. You wanted some whap, and you paid for the whap, and that's just that on that." <laughs> oh, okay. Well, what if it wasn't no whap? <laughs> what if it was some, what if it was some slop? <laughs> well then that that that's his fault. That's his fault. That's his fault. He should have known better. <laughs> now, I do gotta ask, right? Yes. Since you are a lawyer, like when you get into an argument with your man or your whoever you're with, uh, do you always win? Like is that a, just an argument he can't Well the win? thing is, I never lose. So nobody really argues with me, but the thing is, I haven't committed to anybody in a, a long time because I wanted to commit to myself. So I'm not going to argue with that nigga right now. Like, I will have a discussion with somebody, but it's about communicating. It's not about arguing because I get paid to argue. I'm not going to have any discord in my house. So when I do commit, we're going to find a way to work it out. We're going to, you know, we're going to have that discussion and he going to be happy. I'm going to be happy. I might suck some dick. He might do his thing and... And that's just that. But we're not going to be no arguing in my house. Nah. No. <laughs> I mean, for real, it's so much stuff going on in the outside of our house. It's going to be peace in my house. Oh, no. No. Yeah, so why would I do that at home? I'm not doing that at home. No. Now, you did mention that you have five. Not one, not two, not three, not four, but five books. Yes. Um, can you give us the name of those books and where people can go get those? You know what I mean? I okay. think that's a dope accomplishment. Salute to you for doing that. That's, that's awesome. I definitely want to tap in. 
Thank um, you. How can people get that material? Like, um, okay, let's put it out there. Well, the first uh, book that I was able to uh, help co-write, shouts out to Damian Baker, uh, Street Kings 2. So that's number one. Then we can move on to That's Law, Create Your Law Business for This Generation. That is a ebook that I created for the millennial lawyer. Um, and I started that because basically everybody was asking me, well, how do you do this with your firm? And how are you doing that? And, you know, one day I was sitting there, I'm like, well, shit, the game is to be sold, not to be told. So I wrote it in the book. So that's yeah. how, yeah, that's how that came about. Um, we have The Plugs Lawyer. That's my trap novel. Um, that is loosely based on my life, but it's a character named Tia. And, you know, it, 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 you got to pick it up. It's the trap novel. You know, see what's going on. <laughs> okay. And, um, Any movie? Well, the plugs lawyer, yes, the plugs lawyer will be the film. That is that is um, a dream project of that will be completed this year. Because now I'm retired, I can focus more on my creative stuff. Um, the fourth book is called Law and Family Order: Making the Case for Successful Moms to Be. And in that book, I kind of share my journey of me, you know, having success in business but also letting people know I do want to have a baby and here are ways that you can kind of balance that and do it all, you know, according to God's plan. So that book, it was interesting to do because it was my story and it was 11 other authors and they actually have kids and husbands on top of their business. And I wanted to be involved in that because a lot of people, you know, on the outside looking in, they're like, oh, you successful, you know, maybe you don't want kids or are you successful? You don't need kids. You know, everybody have an opinion. So I wanted them to hear from the motherfucking horse's mouth. So that's why I did that one. And then, of course, this my new baby. Look, but don't touch um, the art. This is my coffee table keepsake. It's a lookbook, but it also has my poetry in there. And you will never, ever, ever see a fine ass motherfucking lawyer in the book like this. <laughs> so it has some of my modeling pictures in there. It also has, like I say, my poetry, which I was reluctant to share my poetry for a lot of years. So this is my baby. You know, this is my baby. I share all the emotions, all the girl shit. <laughs> yeah, but it. I think, I definitely think, um, I think you're real brave and I think you got a lot of like a lot of courage to just keep, like to be who you are in the corporate cuz there's a lot of people we all work corporate jobs and we know when you work these type of jobs they expect they expect you to be a certain way but somehow you were able to keep it you but the thing and is who, so who many is things. who is they like I you have a perception of lawyers White that people. listen you have a perception of lawyers that is very boxed in like a lot of people. Again, when I first when I first got my law license, passed the bar first time, all of that, I worked at a law firm for a short period of time. They was doing nigga shit and I wasn't about to lose my law license that I worked hard for. So I left. But I always knew that I would have my own law firm because I came from entrepreneurship. So all you seeing is just a person walking out God's plan and walking by faith. Many people, now I will tell you, a lot of people don't walk by faith because this shit is hard. It's not easy. It's not easy to create something out of nothing because Simmons Law was a zero dollars and I made a six figure business. Like I said, with no business loans, with no mama and daddy putting money in my pocket, just pure hustle and God's plan. So to kind of go back to what you're saying, I never was tainted by you know what I was supposed to be because I didn't know that shit. And that's the beauty of allowing yourself to just experience life. Everybody thinks you're supposed to be perfect or be a perfect way or, or just because you have a certain title. But what's in your heart? Who are you first? I always tell people because I appreciate and I love and receive all the love I get for me being accomplished. But I'm still Tiffany. I'm I'm just I'm a I'm a person too. And when I say that, that means I, I shit just like you. A lot of people see me as, you know, the star or the celebrity. I get that. Cause I do uh, I do the damn thing. But in the in the grand scheme of things, I'm still Tiffany. 
I'm st- I am still want a, a, a lot of the same shit that everybody else want. And just like people, you know, like what I, or want what I have. But I'm grateful for my journey. I don't take it lightly. It's not easy at all. Because, you know, the most flack I get is from niggas. From us. I get niggas want to either not pay bills. They'll go in and pay, you know, another um, law firm that's not black. Pay them all the money. And then come to us when they shit fucked up. Or when they don't get the result they want. Or when they don't trust it. Or whatever. And I'm not saying anything is wrong with getting a um, non-black attorney. What I'm saying is get a person of integrity, a person that you feel okay with when you drop them bands. Because all of my clients, they love their experience unless it was some shit that they didn't need to be a Simmons Law client and I had to release them. But see, I'm not, I'm very different. I don't chase clients and I don't chase money. I am the bad. God takes care of me. So I'm not, I'm not moved by what's, what moves a lot of other attorneys and people. And I still live a very blessed life. Amen. Now, what is harder to prepare for? To entertain or to practice the law? Um, it's the same because practicing law is damn near entertaining too. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't, I think I would say it would depend on the task because right now having a lawsuit that is pending that is a 300 million settlement that is very heavy and it's heavy because of, more so because of the topic i mean i'm doing the same shit that i always done which is win so that's not a problem for me um the topic and because it affects so many people outside of me and my three clients that's what's making that heavy but you know, I love entertainment. I love to, um, I love it. So it's not, I do everything that I love. Even being a lawyer, I loved to do it. Because if you didn't love to do it and have that passion, you won't make it that long. Because it ain't easy to show up to court when them niggas still ain't paid you and you still professional and you still beat the case for they ass. It ain't easy to keep working when you looking at how you're going to pay your staff and you, you know, it's a lot of behind the scenes that people will never understand. The stuff that people are seeing through COVID, imagine seeing that every day. I see tra- I've seen trauma, be- and matter of fact, before that, in my own life, I've lived with trauma all my fucking life. So this shit we seeing with COVID, and even with the um, senseless murders and the just the tragedies that people are experiencing, like this is the type of shit that I knew and I had to remove myself and heal myself because it was affecting me. It was affecting me not only physically, it was affecting me mentally, spiritually, um, and emotionally. So, you know, being a lawyer is not for the faint at heart because we're dealing with a lot of people's traumas, problems on a day in and day out. So shout out to the lawyer. Um, so I, I thank God that this is my last case. So I can focus on other things in life. Is it stop? Huh? Wait, I, I'm asking you why you just wait. Oh, okay. well, no, I'm saying is the video ready now. Okay. No, just make sure. We good. We good. We good. See, I was we saying do. too we much do. real nigga shit. <laughs> real nigga shit. So you, you, like I said, you, you got a lot going on. You got the books. You model. Um, is there any other things that that we we need to touch on as far as the things that you got going right now? You know, um, are you an artist? Do you yes. rap? Well, you are? let me tell. I see. Yeah. <laughs> give us give us some bars. No, man. Give no, us like no. Both. I'm not give us the high bars. No, I'm not an artist like that. I thought you meant with me painting. No, the rap. Oh, okay. Listen, when you I be doing, paint, but we saw you rapping. We saw you rapping. <laughs> listen. 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 I just got good wordplay, baby. I am not a rapper. I just got good wordplay. I am not a rapper. We got a full studio down here. in Okay. Now, what I will say is... When all this this bullshit in, you got to come to the city. I will. I will. Definitely, let's do that. I mean, what I will say is my poetry, I have been transitioning to putting my poetry into songs. 
So what I got for y'all, I, I can do one of the poems. You want me to read one of the poems? Let's do All right. Yeah. Fuck it. I'll read one of the poems. What y'all want to hear? You know, I, I got a little kid around me, so I really don't want to do the nasty one. I can't do the nasty one. <laughs> now, give us some, give us some uh, spiritual. Yeah. Let's do spiritual. Yeah. There's some nasty ones in there. I'm gonna go get yeah. it. You better order my book, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ten, copies. ten copies for the game. Yeah. All right, here go one. You you I'll give y'all the spiritual one then. Right, Look, go. I'll even show y'all the picture. The spiritual body. <laughs> no, leave, no, leave it right there. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is gonna be? <laughs> That's why you need to pick up pick up this book. That's why you need to pick up this book, Hot Off the Press. Yes. Okay. So I will read one of the poems. This is actually on page one of my book, Look But Don't Touch the Art. It was written by myself, Tiffany M. Simmons. The foreword was written by my cousin, Naive Randall. Shouts out to my cousin, my OG. All right. So this one is called God is a Black Woman. I want people to look at me and see God. See God in my actions, not words. See God's beauty in my skin, in my eyes, because I take care of me, my temple. I want people to look at me and see God through my love, through my smile, through the encouragement I give willingly. I want people to look at me and see God, see her, because she performed miracles on me. So I can perform miracles on you. <laughs> okay, so I, I'll give y'all one more. You want one more? You, you, you done. All right. So this one is, um, this is how I'm feeling today. I say this. You ass. This one is a picture. I did a photo shoot in the Wayfield grocery store. <laughs> Four. All right. So we got about four minutes of video left. We can still do the audio, but I'm just letting you know. All right. So this one is called, this one is called not looking, not looking for a title. I'm looking for the top spot. I've held the title of wife, friend, girlfriend, or just the date waiting for what's real and not for what's right now. Everyone wants to fill in a home with someone. I felt it once. I'm going to get it again. For those who don't know, where can they go get that book? They can get the book on Amazon. They can follow me on um, IG, The Pledge Lawyer. And if they DM me, they can order directly from me and get a signed copy. Um, follow the website, The Plugs Lawyer. Um, we on IG. We on Twitter. I am Simmons Law. We out there in them streets, but you know they you trying to Simmons Law private though. The what? Oh. Yeah, yeah. The not the I am Simmons Law. I am Simmons Law on Twitter is is oh. is public. The Plugs Lawyer is a private page right now, but it'll be open back up soon. We okay. just you know we just gotta move a little bit different. You know people you people watching. <laughs> Amen. People watching. Well, Tiffany. You yes. are a blessing. We so happy to have you all. We really, but we really need you here when all this shit in. We're gonna get you to Dallas. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm moving around. Look. I'm moving around. Yeah. We might can make yeah, something happen. Move you around. I was I just in uh, Cali, what two weeks ago? So you know, yeah. If God, if that's God's plan, I'll be there soon. <laughs> Amen. And not only are you the plugs lawyer, but you a real life street star. Motherfucking Ooh. right. <laughs>